Hi, this is Katie. Um, I'm making a video over my ombre to dystonia. I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I adjust my facial muscles and adapt them um, while I'm playing my horn uh, to my ombre to dystonia. And this is something that's very difficult to describe because, um, of course, uh, for those who know what ombre to dystonia is, it's a neurological disorder. Um, so it means there's a misfiring brain signal and that causes um, uh, it's a feel kind of like a sensory disorder um, so there's a lot of weird muscle movements around the face um, and again ombre dystonia is on a spectrum so not everybody who who has ombre dystonia has identical symptoms or their face doesn't react in the exact same way as the next person to next person um, so when I'm showing and demonstrating how I adapt um, this is I'm not saying this in any way to imply that this is something that would work with helping others with their ombre dystonia. I'm just showing how I have to personally adapt to my horn and adapt um, my muscles to be able to play through different passages. Um, so in this sense, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the syllables that I use when I'm playing my horn. So most uh, traditional uh, pedagogy teaches you that you need to you use either syllables like two or T or um, so for example, like tuku for double tonguing, tuku, 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 and then there's triple tonguing, and then just single tonguing, tu, 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 tu. Um, and uh, a lot of people will teach you to um, do the traditional embouchure formation where your chin is flat and your corners are tight, and then your, when you're tonguing and saying T or two, you're hitting the roof of your mouth um, while doing that, so it kind of looks like this. <laughs> But again, with embouchure dystonia, uh, the signal is broken, so I don't use that old signal that I, I was trained on, that I grew up with, the normal setting that I always, have always had for how many X amount of years, because again, it's broken. Um, and the more I try to use that setting over the years, the, the more it fights me. So um, over the years, I had to learn how to um, adapt to my embouchure dystonia, to learn how to play while having the symptoms. And uh, so it takes a lot of experimentation and that's a really hard place to get to uh, because um, a lot of people who are diagnosed with this, of course, have to go through the grieving process. And um, that's hard because you lose your sense of identity. Um, you just want answers right away. You just want to be able to play right away. And there's no real uh, legit solutions that you can rely on. And it, it just becomes overwhelming. Um, and so it's hard to get to that spot where you can experiment and, and feel uh, almost like excited to embrace your sound even though you have dystonia and to embrace your playing, to be creative and to also just settle in the mon mundane observation that it takes to, to kind of use a scientific method way of, of observing your symptoms and uh, assessing your body and the movement and, and how different adaptations work and help you out. Um, and so for anyone that's going through that grieving process, um, just know that it's important to go through that process. Um, don't rush it. Um, even if people say like, I, mean, I am ready, I'm ready to play now. I'm ready to be cured now. I'm ready to um, play again. Um, no matter what, that grieving process can't be rushed. So it's like, take your time with getting through it. Um, because the more you're able to be in a place where you're, you're able to experiment with your horn and, and also just accept that you have ombre dystonia, accept that, uh, accept the sound, accept your horn, um, and to be able to listen to horn music or listen to, um, anything related and not, not, uh, feel hurt and not feel sad or not feel angry or frustrated, uh, then the better off you are in a place of, of beginning to start rehabilitating. Um, so with that said, um, over the years, uh, of course, uh, adopting to my ombre dystonia has required a lot of learning leverage. Uh, so finding little leverages every day. Um, but I'm not going to discuss the be beginning rehabilitation strategies because I did that in a completely different video. Instead of here, I'm going to be going over kind of what I do while I'm playing my horn. Um, and I'm not using the greatest example because um, today I'm going to be playing through Franz Strauss's uh, Opus 8 over or concerto and it's it's just a couple of sections of it. it's not the full piece and the reason why is because I wanted to show my symptoms 
and kind of what I use while I'm playing through more of these legato phrases and tonguey phrases. I really struggle with descending phrases. Um, I can go ascending, it still struggles, but descending is difficult. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the syllables that I use and the embouchure formation that I use uh, to cope with my dystonia. So I use more like of a, a, a syllable of like saying, uh, uh, saying poo, or you can think ha, or maybe like ha or poo, because I'm my corners are looser; they're not set. And also, um, I use a lot of air bubbles in my chin. You'll notice as I start playing, and I have air bubbles up here. Uh, for those who have Amherst dystonia, usually we're affected on one side of the face uh, more than the other. There's usually muscles that compensate for the lack of muscle movement going, happening on the other side of the face where the signal's not, not working. And so for me, you can see that while I'm talking, for example, like over here, this side of my face is more defined than the other while I'm talking. And so you'll see a lot of how this comes into play while I'm playing, because you'll see my my lower lip here rolling out a lot, uh, a ton, and then this having to adapt for it, to compensate for it, and then this side is kind of flaccid, it's not doing anything. Uh, so you'll see how much I struggle while I'm playing. Um, again, I don't really use, um, I, I don't really play a whole lot of concertos, and I don't recommend it, especially with Amherst dystonia, but I do use it to assess my symptoms. But um, uh, just because, uh, it's better to break things up in really small sections. Um, I think that's why it's a little bit easier for me to play in like brass quintet or orchestras um, because it's a lot of broken up sections. It allows me to rest and allows me time to reset like when I'm playing. Um, not that it's any easier music, but it's just a lot more broken up and it's not requiring as much endurance as it does having to play through a concerto. Um, so um, I'm gonna start off by playing uh, just a chromatic scale starting on my F. Um, I was playing with my mutin and I recorded a whole video of this beforehand but I decided I didn't like it because I was playing with my mutin and then as soon as I played with my mute out it, it's just the audio was a lot better so uh, I'm gonna play without my mute and I'm gonna start on, on a middle F and work my way up and down. Uh, just notice how my the air changes in the bubble of my chin how air leaks from this side and like how my corners fluctuate. Notice how this muscle kicks in a lot to pull pull certain muscles back while I'm playing um, and kind of just take note of it. So you kind of notice what was going on there. Um, so just to let you know, when I do uh, switch over to playing, like something where I'm doing a lot more jumps or slurs or jumping registers, of course you're gonna see a lot of movement happening. Um, here it's gonna look a little, you're gonna be like, oh, that looks a little awkward, like going up and down, it looks a little wanky, like there's things that kind of off, but just wait until I play the concerto and then you'll see a lot of craziness happening. Um, and um, it, it will kind of show you how, really difficult is to play with play while having ombre to dystonia because you'll see all these movements happening in my face it's like how are you even playing when all these movements are happening it's just weird um 
But kind of how I cope with that is I use um, a combination of air puffs or air attacks mixed with um, normal attacks. But even the normal attacks aren't necessarily normal. Like I said, most uh, pedagogy teaches you to use like two for your articulations. I use da. So I use da and everything, like da, 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 da. And some passages or, or notes or sections I can't even use articulation at all, so I have to slur. So a lot of times I'll have to like slur to, tongue to, or like slur a certain section and then tongue, or tongue and then slur, um, just to kind of bypass, just to, to adapt and kind of bypass to get through the section. Um, it just depends on the phrase. Um, but a lot of times I'll be uh, switching back and forth between air attack and da. So it'll be like, poof attack, da. So it'll be like, da, 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 that makes sense. Um, I'll try to show you here on my, um, I'm gonna play just my middle F. So I'll do, um, I'll do poof attack first. use tongue attack and use da of course the poof attack sounds more separated because there's breaks in between um, so I use that a lot more for like um, for for uh, articulations where it's difficult uh, to articulate um, but also it helps me kind of um, the the not the poof attacks but the da that's kind of it's more like a, a legato tongue um, and that helps me get through sections where it's like I kind of have to articulate but I can't really but I need to so I kind of use that instead um, but I try to interchange between both I can't really do short or staccato tongue if I do I try to use an air attack um, but anyways, I do want to emphasize that when I'm playing through, uh, music like this, like a concerto or a passage like this, I'm not, with Ambrosia Distorni, again, I'm not thinking about the music. I'm not thinking about, am I playing musicals and musicality? Is that involved? Like, am I thinking about the air and the phrases and the beauty of it? And am I doing the right articulations? And is it perfect? Am I getting everything correct and right? That's not what I'm thinking about. My mindset is more focused on my assessing my embouchure dystonia symptoms. So I'm thinking, can I get through this section with this specific uh, poof attack or air attack? Um, can I use my da tonguing? What do I have to adjust here or adjust on my horn? Uh, whether do I need to play off my leg here or on my leg, or do I need to tilt or angle differently, or use a different side of my face? Um, to get this to work. So again, I'm thinking about more about adaptation to my embouchure dystonia. So I'm checked into my embouchure dystonia, not so much into the music when I'm playing. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I want you to kind of see like how I'm adapting as I'm going along. Cause again, I'm not thinking about the music. I'm thinking about the embouchure dystonia and how I can adapt to it. So um, I'm gonna play a little bit of this for you guys and kind of break it down into chucks so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and uh, I just want to say that um, before I start also, uh, you'll see a lot of struggles bet between like jumping registers and that's because um, with embouchure dystonia, it's kind of similar to like, um, how do I say this? Like catching melting caramel. It's like, you know, it stays in one formation for a second, but it's quickly warping into into something else and so you only have a split second to keep it that way so that's why kind of you see with ombre dystonia it's like oh i can play this descending passage really fast or i can play this passage really slow but i can't play any other tempo variation of that because the ombre is just warping or moving in a different way that it's not going to stay set if you're playing it at a specific tempo. It's like has to be either fast or slow. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll try to bring that up again as I'm playing. So um, let me go ahead and see here. Um, I'll start at the beginning. And I'm gonna upload a photo uh, right next to the video. That hopefully will help. Uh, help you guys take along. 
and again this this air attack I'll try and play on my A so it's a little bit more visible for those wanna, who want to know so like an air attack like I use poo or you can use ha and then da for the tongue attack and I can't tongue on every single note I know that sounds weird but I can't tongue on every single note depending on what note it is um, that one I just happened to be able to a little bit actually So let's go back to the start. So um, definitely really difficult to get through. Um, there's a lot of weird little jumps in there that are hard with the Ombre Dystonia. So you saw in the first half, um, the slurring, it wasn't too bad. I could get through the slurring, um, but as soon as I had to start descending, that little passage right there is very difficult for me because I have to re-articulate um, a couple different notes, the D, the B flat, and the F sharp. Da, 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 da. And that's really difficult. So I'm thinking like, oh, when I go back, should I just slur it all? Or should I re-articulate one of those? Will that be easier for me? And then slur the rest. Um, I'm gonna go back and try to do it again. Um, my advice though is like if you're if you have Amherst dystonia and you're trying to play through melodic stuff like this um, again don't worry about the, doing the correct articulation or where it says it should be articulated or where you should breathe throw that all out the window like oh you should only be breathing every four measures or eight measures like oh you should only be uh, you should be articulating here or there don't think about that just do what feels most natural for your body and do that because that's going to help you get to be able to adapt um, and to enjoy your playing and actually like learn how to adapt to your embouchure dystonia and and uh, know over a longer period of time of what you can use to be able to get through difficult passages like this so I might find that you know oh maybe not slurring this section will be easier for me or maybe if I just slur the whole section it will be easier for me so let me see on this descending passage again descending is very difficult for me if I can do it all slurred <laughs> gonna have to sew it all to get through it okay and then moving to the really tricky triplet this is really hard for me to do actually if I try to play it on my mute I tried to play it muted earlier and I cannot get through this measure with my mute in like at all it's just like nearly impossible um, for some reason without the mute it's a lot easier for me So I'm using air puffs there actually. And I'm using a little bit of, of da tongue on the higher notes, just a tiny bit, like a little tiny bit of tongue on those higher notes, just tiny bit, not not very much. 
Yeah, so that's really hard. Again, I can't really do it slower. It's almost impossible for me to do it slower, slower with embouchure dystonia. And I'll show you with the mute in what it sounds like. It's very difficult. Just because I want you to see um, how much I actually struggle with it. Um, without the mute in, it's actually like my tone tone kind of covers, covers up the difficulty of it. So, um, again, I had to kind of alternate between tongue and, and air attack there. But again, it's the really breaking things down into like really getting used to air attacking a lot. A majority of my, my articulations are going to be air tongue because I have so much air bubbles happening in my face when I'm playing. I have an air bubble happening up here and an air bubble down here almost at all times. Um, when I'm playing in my mid to upper range, it, my lower lips a little, I mean my upper lips a little bit more stretched out or flat. Not stretched out but flat. But there's still still air bubble in it and this with my lower lip there's even more air when I'm in the mid to low range in my uh, down in my chin <coughs> but doing the the air attacks will help a lot or at least for me it does uh, alternating because then I can get through kind of passages like that which are really difficult so even with ombre Estonia um, it's like a lot of masking things, like a lot of masking and a lot of like finding ways to sound like you're doing something that you're not really. It's like, oh, it's, you know, it kind of sounds tongue, but not really. It's like, yeah, that's because I'm kind of alternating between two different things at the same time. Um, and um, so just doing whatever it takes to help help alleviate, to be able to adapt with your ombre dystonia symptoms. And this took me a long time to learn how to do this. Um, like it's just playing just single one note because in the beginning you can't even like hold on to notes you can't even like um uh grasp notes you can't even grab them and hold on to them so once you do get that at the point it's like how do i even start articulating again um i can't even use my tongue I can barely use my tongue um i can barely use my tongue anymore at all today um i can in some of my higher notes a little bit easier but majority of the time not um, so the air attack or air puffs helped me a lot. Um, so I'm going to show on just like maybe like on a, on a arpeggio. Let me see if I can do one. <laughs> I use tongue unit on the F because I can't use air attacks on the F for some reason. I can, but it's actually easier for me to tongue on the higher register, but in the anywhere below that, it's like I have to use air attack. Uh, actually, I take that back. I'd say from my, my C on the staff up to... to C on the staff and upwards I can tongue, but anywhere below that. Yep, so I can alternate between um, between tonguing and uh, air attacks on any lower notes. Um, so just getting used to that, and it's not, 
it's it's something where it's like you just kind of get used to like does it feel good to use an air tack on this note um or can i actually tongue on this note and again tonguey is like such a hard thing to reintroduce with ombre to estonia it's like almost impossible um so you know don't just try to do it and and, and expect for it to work um it's it's um this is this is just something that took me such a long time to be able to do um, and again, it's just very much at a very minimal level. Like, it's like I'm barely tonguing at all. It's like, it's, I'm not even, I'm barely touching the roof of my mouth. Um, and sometimes I'm not even touching the roof of the mouth. Sometimes I'm touching the side. Um, but again, this is because my ombre de dystonia affects me in such a weird way. Um, okay, so moving on. <laughs> air puffs air puffs but um the slurred part is actually really difficult for me da, da, slur. Tongue, tongue. that's hard i'm trying to use air tacks there but it's not easy so i might just slur or I can try it and I the slur upwards the sorry I'm tonguing what should be slurred and slurring what should be tongued so the slur is harder there um, than it is um, tonguing um, okay, I'm going to move on, keep going on, because my battery's about to die, but I'm going to show you guys more, just so you guys can kind of see how I, um, cope with my homage to while I'm playing my horn. That's really difficult. Okay, the tiny part. I'm actually trying to tongue there. It's a little bit easier for me than air puff, but maybe I can just slur it. Yeah, that's a lot easier, but I also kind of can tongue it a tiny bit. So I'm air puffing those two, and then I'm tonguing the rest. Okay, and then moving on to the next section, I'm going to skip all the high plane. Again, descending. This is really hard for me. Okay, I just want to show here really quick how this passage I can't really play because of my Ombre de Dysnonia. I can't play it in tempo, I can't play it fast, I can only play through it quite slow. I'm trying to use air attacks. 
want me to play that okay so you can kind of see how it changes every single time I play it every single time I play it it changes um, and this is again because the Amish is starting to catches on it's like what are you doing oh I see what you're trying to do you and you let me help you and it tries to help you but it can't because the signal is broken so whatever it sends it just doesn't help so um, but you can also see that a huge part of, of why it's so difficult to get through anything is because of this this lower lip down here just getting in the way of everything like it's just doing whatever it wants and then also this side just is not kicking in it just doesn't kick in like when it should it doesn't adjust or kick in when it should um, so you can kind of see how this muscle um, works a lot like there's a lot of soreness up here after I'm done playing and and even up here into my nose um, some days it's weird because I can see the muscle uh, tension like up here next to my nose and it's almost like there's a bump there and it's because uh, The muscle gets all bulky from playing like if I start practicing a lot more If I if I'm playing like in a, in a community orchestra like all the time or brass quintet all the time Then I start to see the much more definition happening in my muscles on especially on the side of my face um, You can kind of see how how this all affects me, but um Again, trying to describe how I adapt. Um, so when I'm playing, what you don't see also is that I'm also switching between playing on my leg and off my leg while I'm playing um, to help with that adapting. Because sometimes there are certain passages where I'm like, oh, I can definitely play more easy on my leg in this section. Like these four measures are just, just this measure, measure. And the other times off my leg, it helps. Um, and then again, like I'm not really showing so much tilting going on uh, in here, but in the past I did it a lot um, to help with coping with my playing. Because again, I did a lot of experimentation with um, trying to um, figure out what leverage work worked for me every day. So I might be like, oh, um, today uh, using air attacks help helps me or maybe tomorrow it doesn't, then more using the da tonguey helps me, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, maybe if I tilt my horn this angle today, it'll help me more, and then it does. Sometimes it's a different mouthpiece, sometimes it's playing with the mute, sometimes it's not playing the mute, sometimes playing uh, straight muted helps me um, practice, where other days I can't play, like if I'm playing with no mute in, I can't play at all. It's like such a huge struggle to play with nothing in my bell. Um, so amateur dystonia is weird like that. It's like sometimes it just, it's just like a sensory disorder. It just acts up to a gust of wind. It's like, oh, wow, <laughs> you know, like, why are you so upset today? And why are you acting up today when I'm doing, when I did the same thing yesterday? So it just changes all the time. So you're constantly having to change up what you're doing. You're constantly having to experiment. And, and the more you experiment and you learn kind of how your amateur dystonia catches on then you can learn how to adapt to it and, and change things up and and make it work uh, so it's just a little bit easier and then a little bit easier a little bit easier a little bit easier and even though it's still difficult you at least have some a bag of kind of like uh, of, of sensory tricks or tactics or, or adaptations that you can use to help you play to get through your playing Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play a little, just a scale, just so you can guys can kind of see my embouchure one more time before I end this video. <laughs> scales in a while.
this so you can see how my lower lip goes out. Sorry, I kept saying it was coming out of this side. It's actually this side where my lower lip droops a lot. Okay, so I hope that this video gave you a little bit of context for seeing how my armor share dystonia affects me, how I kind of adapt uh, while I'm playing. Again, this is taking me a really long time to get to a place where I can kind of play through things like this, just little chunks at a time. Again, I don't practice concertos or solos like this all the time. Sometimes I'll play through a, a small etude because they're a little bit easier if they're smaller pieces, um, especially if it's like excerpts that I can play. But um, I think, again, that's why I really like playing in, in brass quintet or playing in um, community orchestras because it's just a little bit easier for me as far as endurance and if you're playing an easier piece where it's like more classical era where you're just kind of holding a couple notes here and there get me don't get me wrong that's really hard that's really hard to hold out notes especially with embouchure dystonia but but it's still a lot easier than than having to kind of jump through a million different hoops like it is playing through a concerto like this um but i hope this helped provide some insight if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comment section and i hope to see you guys again soon all right bye